Harlan's through, he might go for it, still going, trying to barge his way through, goes to the shot, and what a goal! Arriving Rian O'Neill from an almost impossible angle, and that's the rousing score I'm now we're looking for. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Sideline Eye podcast. We have a massive preview show coming up today as the Anglo Celt is up for grabs this Sunday and it's our match taking on Donegal in Clonus at 4pm. I'm delighted to be once again joined by John Harn, former Donegal footballer and he's going to help me to sack this game, there's, there's a lot to get through. Um, John, as we were talking off air there, and I know the last time I had you on, we sort of joked that, you know, probably going to meet in a league final and there's a possibility of an Ulster final there, but it maybe didn't look as likely from a Donegal point of view at, the, at that stage with the path they had to go on. But um, there's so much to get through here. This is such a, a massive game. Absolutely, Sean. It's, it's, it's brilliant, you know, and... Uh... As we were talking beforehand, like the, the you no, know, the demand for tickets is just phenomenal. I've never seen anything like it, you know, for an Ulster final. Like normally, you know, Clonus will sell out and there'll be a big crowd there, but there's no problem. You know, other years you get them on Ticketmaster, people that weren't, you know, necessarily club members. Anyone that wanted to, you know, get a ticket would, would, would get a ticket and you'd be there. I don't know what's Clonus is it twenty eight or twenty nine thousand, so or maybe it's over thirty. But you know, at the, at the moment, like all over Facebook and Twitter for the league, all clubs are putting up notices that they're not going to be able to meet the demand of, of, of their club members so you know there's people scrambling and then i hear you know people giving out that they can't get the family tickets they might be able to get four tickets but they're going to have to pay the adult prices and there's all that there carry on so you know it's, it's not easy for the club secretaries but you know i had a couple of things on twitter there during the week you know if you're a club member you know this is where this is where it pays off pay your 30 or 40 pound whatever it is and support your local club and be a member and you'll, you know you'll, you'll get looked after at t- times like this whether you go to one game a year or you go to 12 or 13 games a year mechanic cup doesn't matter but you know the club member is going to be looked after now so uh i'm happy enough about that as a club chairman you know it'll, it'll help all the clubs next year when, when the membership's up up people will be you know knocking down the door hopefully looking to pay for it pay the membership and help everyone but the, the demand you know the, the interest like we all know our man have massive support be it a McKenna Cup game in January or an Ulster final. So, do they go all the way, but, you know, we, we, we wouldn't travel in as, as big a numbers early on in the season. But, you know, the McGinnis factor, as we talked about, Sean, that time I was on for the league, like the McGinnis factor is massive. And the goodwill factor that he's brought to the league of football is huge. And now, just on the back of the results against Derry, especially, which was a real ambush, and people, you know, we went into that game thinking, all right, we might have a chance. But Derry were highly rated league champions, but, you know, the way he, he pulled off that there, like his mystique has just gone through the roof again. Now, the Tyrone performance was always going to be a hard one because the turnaround is six or seven days. I know Tyrone at the same turnaround, but they were never going to get up to them heights of the Derry game. But, you know, we did enough to come through an extra time. So I think they're all are sitting, sitting happy now with the two weeks preparation. And, and listen, I think the weather hopefully will be a good day and the packed clonus and Armagh with the, with the colour that they bring. It's going to be a brilliant day, you know. It's nearly a throwback, John. I know them them naughties Ulster finals were in Croke Park, but like growing up, all them memories were sunny days in Clonus. And I know I haven't spoken to David Marsden um for the Gaelic Life podcast this week. He was laughing about that too. Like you don't remember the bad days or the rainy days or nothing in Clonus. It's always sunshine and packed house and a good game of football. Hopefully to go with it. Absolutely. Like growing up, you know, uh I remember my first day in Clonus was uh, 83, Ulster final. I think maybe only six or seven. You know, that was my first time in Clonus. Then they got about Cavan. And then I think, you know, with them, we were back in five Ulster finals in a row 89. Tyrone bet us 90. We won it. Then they all won it. 91, obviously, down bet us in the final, maybe in a replay. 92, obviously, we won it again. And uh, then 93 was the wet day that Derry bet us. So, you know, Donegal growing up, you know, when you were a teenager, it was five Ulster finals in a row. And as you say, four of them days were great warm weather days. And then the, the, the day, the, the, the rainy day against Derry in, in 93, you know. So, yeah, Clonus brings back great memories. And I'm fairly Sean, you know, I can't be two faced here. I wouldn't be a great, you know, I think the way that the season's panned out now, the split season, all that, I think the provincials have lost a lot of their, you know, a, a, you know, a lot, a lot of their prestige. Maybe that's because Munster's one-sided and the Dubs have dominated Leinster so much. But even you see last week, like with the Connor Championship and 
the, you know, but it meant to Galway to win it, even though they'd won the two previously, but to beat Mayo, they were under pressure and, and the outpour of joy. And, and you know, it, uh, so, you know, and when you see an Ulster final now, there's going to be a sellout. And like, normally it's, it's July, but now you're you're so far earlier in the season, it's only May, but it's going to be a sellout. Like, and I know what it means to Armagh because them, that group of players haven't won an Ulster title. You know, like they're chomping at the bit to do it and McGuinness on his, on his second coming again. So it's building up. But it, it, it's, you know, in many ways, it, it, it beggars belief that there is such interest in a, in a provincial final again. But I suppose McGuinness has nailed his colours to the mast very early that he wanted to win an Ulster title with a studying all team, probably in his first year. Maybe an All-Ireland could be, could be too far for the first year, but maybe he's building towards that. So, you know, he's really built it up. I think Geezer and Armagh have always built it up and they really want that Ulster title. So it's just all come together for a perfect storm that we're going to have a full house in Clonus and please God, a great game. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt Geezer and Armagh, they're, they're, they're really looking this Ulster crown. And like Jim McGuinness's record in Ulster is phenomenal, John, because going on his first year, first stint, the first four years, he only lost one game. Like he won three titles in four years on Monaghan. Yeah, Monaghan yes, beat them in the 13. 2013 final. Mm-hmm. So like his, his Ulster record is is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. And it, you know, uh coming from you know, he, Jim talks a lot about his first year as a Donegal player. I was a young fella as a sub in ninety two. That was his only Ulster medal. And you know, he was only a sub, he didn't he didn't kick a ball, but he still counts it. And then he tried so long. To try and win one as a player, and I played with him for a few years, and you know we lost that ninety-eight one to Derry and Clonus, and then them couple against Armagh and uh, Croke Park, you know. So McGuinness has obviously put a has always put a lot, you know, into the Ulster Championship. He talks about his disappointment of never having kind of won one on the pitch as a player, and then so when he came back, like to win that one, when was the last time he won it before that? Was it? It was ninety-two. Wasn't it until we won it under so, yeah. McGuinness in 2011? So it was 19 years. So it was massive for Diddy Gall back then, you know. And uh, yeah, his, his record was 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 unbelievable. And in, uh, in those four years, and I remember, I remember showing a funny story about the 2013 Ulster final. My wife's from Kelly Clower and uh, Tyrone, and we had a communion or something, or maybe a christening, a first birthday party, and it was up on the Saturday before the Ulster final, and. Uh, they're all chatting about the match, the match, you know, and I says, I says, boys, Jesus, if anyone knows anything about football, they know that Monaghan have not hope of beating Donegal. We were all Ireland, <laughs> cha- we were all Ireland champions, you know, we were going well, we were back in an Ulster final, and I just, you know, so <laughs> the O'Kane brothers and, and uh, Kelly Glover always slagged me about that, they still remember, they still give me that light, if anyone knows anything about football, they know that Monaghan have not hope, and it just goes <laughs> to show you, you know, Monaghan came out and wiped the floor with Donegal that day, they were, they were up for it, and, uh, you know, it can happen in football, so you can never you can never be too confident. And that, that period that Jim McGuinness did take over in the Emulster titles, um, John, it kicked off a golden period for Donegal, like I think, um, interviewing Paddy McBurdy the other day, I think, I hope I have the stat right, have they been in 10 of the last 12 finals or, or something yeah, like yeah. that? Yeah, they, they, they were in 10 of the last 12 finals up until the last year. Well, last year they, they were they were in it again. No, they weren't in it again. Armagh and Derry, but they were oh, in it again before Derry. that. Uh, well, yeah. Derry, Derry. So yeah, they were ten of the last twelve finals. This is probably eleven now or thirteen or eleven and four. So unbelievable, really. When when you take it that we went that nineteen years without winning it, but we were in a few. But no, it has definitely been a golden uh, period for Donegal, and I suppose and 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 that time too. Sean, there was a bit of apathy when you wouldn't have got big crowds going to Ulster finals because it was happening every year. We'd won them under McGuinness and then Declan Bonner, Rory Gallagher came in and we won another few. But, you know, there wouldn't have been the same excitement. So, you know, McGuinness has really regenerated it all again and, and, and the, the hype is massive. And there's a lot of lot of Ulster titles, a lot of Ulster medals and not change it, Donegal changing room. Um, John, like, you know, McBrady, McHugh, Patton, they all have medals that have that experience. Now, Armagh obviously have the experience of last year that you would hope from an Armagh perspective in terms of, will the hurt, they'll be carrying that into this weekend, but also the experience, they know what's going to come with the, you know, the parade, the crowd, whatever else else the final brings um, on that sort of occasion. But both teams probably are experienced enough at this stage. Like Armagh, they've only, this is only their second Ulster final and, you know, since 2008, but they've played in so many big games, big games in Croke Park and that, so, like, there's loads of experience in both changing rooms. 
I think so, Sean. Yeah, that, you know, as you say, that that experience of playing in the big games against in Crow Park, like with big crowds of sixty thousand, them games against Galway, they went to penalties even last year against Monaghan. You know, they have they have a lot of experience. So I, I don't think you know, although Ulster finals are different, and there's a you know there's a there's a title on the line, and it's not a national league title. It's it's the one that they want an Ulster title. So definitely, there's going to be pressure. And with Danny Gall, yes. You know, there's this narrative that goes around. I don't know whether McGuinness has spun on himself or maybe people just kind of think that it's because McGuinness is his first year back that a somewhat a, a new Denny Gall team or he's doing things differently. When in actual fact, he's got a lot of very experienced players, as you said, the Ray McHugh, Paddy McBerty, Sean Patton, Kieran Thompson, Jason McGee was there in 2019 when they won it. I think Nile O'Donnell from the old club would have been there in 2018. Maybe, you know, so... You know, uh, Brandon McCall's around a long time now. You know, Steve McMenamin was on that 2019 team. So there's a lot of experience in the Donegal team and they've played a lot of big games. So uh, it's going to be interesting. For some reason, Sean, it's, uh, I've been thinking about it a lot. And I'm not just saying this, but I think, that, you know, that the pressure is really going to be on our map because I think the want, you know, that them pre- the pressure on them players to win an Ulster title and for Geezer to finally win something after 10 years, you know, it's, uh, I think it's massive for them. Now, as I said before, McGuinness has certainly nailed his colours to the bat that he wants an Ulster title and he puts big, you know, so the price is going to be on Denny Gall too. But I just think somewhere, you know, that that, that there's serious, serious pressure on the Sarmat team to get over the line and, and, and to get that Ulster title. Yeah, no, I I would agree with that, John. But just because of Geezer's tenure, you know, the, the ten years obviously now this year, but also for the boys, Roy Grugan, Aidan Falker, Stephen Campbell, Andrew Mernon, like the boys that have been there, you know, ten plus years, it's it's time they they sort of won an Ulster title. I'm sure they're feeling that pressure as well. So no, I would go with that, John. There, there's there's more much more pressure in Arma that. Michael Murphy speak of it's yes. a ten year project versus a ten month project. Yeah, and that's, that's yeah. probably not as accurate as as that or as clean straight as that. But um, there is that aspect of it. Like I think there is more pressure yeah. in Armagh, and I'm not sure like if it's that pressure. You know, Armagh have been in them pressured situations and they haven't come through it. But against Down, probably, and I know a lot of the players and Geezer did mention that after the games that they've been in, in so many games like that, that, you know, they've been hanging on and they've been beat or it's the end of the draw. They actually won that one. So I'm sure they'll be filled with confidence coming into this game too, that they've come through a tight battle and they, they had enough composure and experience on the field to actually land the winning score. Absolutely. No, I, you know, that way they worked that last score, you know, it did show a lot of experience and a lot of patience and they didn't panic. And, you know, they worked the clock well to say, right, we're going to get one shot when we nail it. You know, the game's more or less going to be over and, and fair play to them. Well, it wasn't down at a chance at the end, but in fairness, you know, Armagh worked that score very well and, and took and took it. And, you know, as you say, they, they have a bad record in close games and big games where they haven't come out, be it penalties. I know you can you can say there's some penalties, there's penalties, but still they've, you know, lost two or three penalty shootouts. So, uh, no, it was a big one for them to get over down the way that down set up and the way that they played it and they just had to be so patient and patient now from my point of view i would like to think that denny gall are a good bit better than down and they'll bring a lot more to the game than what down brought so it's whether our can you know you know face that challenge that denny gall are going to bring and will they have enough you know to, to with, with withstand that and then get scores the other end themselves so it's, listen it's going to be a fascinating game how do you see it been played out, John? Because obviously that down game, like down put 15 men behind the ball and there's probably very little Armagh could have done other than mirrored them. Maybe kept, it would have, they could have kept maybe one or two up, but you know you have to mirror a team nearly when they're playing like that. Donegal probably changed their game up slightly against Tyrone, against Derry. They were very much counter-attacking. There was that long kick out, obviously, which caught out Orrin Lynch. But do you see it being a cagey 15 men behind the ball both sides counter-attacking game or do you see it opening up a wee bit? Or maybe well, maybe we'll see maybe we'll see all aspects on, on Sunday. Well, yeah, I uh, yeah, I think you'll see all. I think it'll, it'll start off, listen Sean, I think it'll start off cagey enough. Both teams will be feeding at each other and, 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 and they'll be, you know, over and back and trying to punch holes and try and get scores. You know, unless beginners to some, you know, plan that they launch a couple of early high balls and which they don't really do to Nicole. You know, they might they might try and you know, McGinnis is great for isolating someone or getting maybe 
Akila McGonagall, I know he's playing number six, or maybe Jason McGee. Now, I know our man, big midfielders, but you know, McGinnis was great at, at, at finding a mismatch where he could put someone to number 10, and next thing they do, they do a wheel around, and you know, he'd, he'd end up on the, on, the, on the edge of the square against, say, as Paddy Burns wouldn't be overly tall, or some of them cornerbacks from our man wouldn't be, you know, against a Jason McGee or a Michael Langan, a six foot four. You know, McGinnis can work up, so you know, you wouldn't know what. He, could Donegal try something like that there? Maybe after 15 minutes, and they launch a long ball in, and there's a mismatch at the end of the square, and, and they get it. But what, what will happen, Sean, is that you know, as you said, Donegal the counter attack, and when once Donegal do turn over Armagh, they're going to race up the field like dogs and like greyhounds. And that's you know, can Armagh scramble back? Can they hold them up? Can they cynical foul? What's 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 Armagh tactic going to be? Because Donegal are good at transitioning, you know, they're very good at moving the ball quick, they've got. They're going to have a lot of runners. And, you know, the big difference with Denny Gall, I know under Declan Boner, we had a bit of success, but we were very lateral. Paddy Carr last year, you know, it, it wasn't kind of a non event of a year, but this time, Denny Gall, they're punching holes, they're going fast, the men coming off the shoulder, and, and they're taking teams on. Sean, and the second half is going to open up. You know what I mean? I'd say that, you know, it's going to be a ferocious first half. Now, There'll be a lot of hits, there'll be a lot of tactics, but it will open up and say a team gets a goal and maybe goes two or three points up. The other team's going to have to come out and play a bit. So it might, I think, you know, it'll open up in the second half. First half could be cagey enough, but I think, you know, the pure defensive football, I think it's gone from Donegal. You know, they're, they know that you're going to have to score 116, 117, you know, to win a game. So, you know, you have to get scores at the other end. I think Armagh. Hopefully they'll do the same. Now, no doubt last week, 2-6, and they thought they could win a game, but it's very hard to do. You know, it's very hard to do. Yeah, I think it's it's nearly been proven at this stage that when there's two evenly matched teams, that it, it doesn't work. Like, you, yeah. you have to go and, and win it at, at some stage. But you're talking about the way McGuinness can maybe mix things up and he's great at finding a mismatch or maybe springing a, a surprise. And, like, there's, there's going to be something here. I know everybody I'm talking to, has come up with ideas about Armand will do this and he'll geezer start this player and Donegal will, will start it. We have no idea when that no to five minutes to four on, on Saturday yes. or on Sunday. Yeah. But one of the big things is and I know I was tuning into your club mate Brendan Devaney on, on Monday night and he had Aaron Kiernan on his Highland radio show and they were discussing Ethan Raverty maybe starting instead of Blaine Hughes. Now I, I don't think it'll happen, but it's it's a tactic that has been successful for Armagh last year, so maybe it wouldn't be beyond the the realms of possibility. But do you see Armagh going with that tactic, or do you see them doing something to, to spring a surprise on Donegal? Well, it's it's very hard to know, Sean. Like Ethan Rafferty, I suppose of all the goalkeepers, inter county goalkeepers, maybe him and Niall Morgan. Like Niall Morgan's an exceptional player, but Niall Morgan plays outfield for club week in Dork. Uh, Rory Began plays in goal for, for Scottstown. Sean Patton plays in goal for, for our own club, St. Julian's. You know, most of the goalkeepers do play in goal, but uh, Ethan Rafferty is an exception along with Nine Morgan, and that's why Nine Morgan's so good that he can come out and find a pass and he's not afraid to solo up the field. You know, we've seen last week, right, so the Derry experiment failed badly against Donegal and was showing up and, you know, everyone said, Jesus, the goalkeeper's going to have to stay back. What the hell are they doing up the field? Last week, you know, you seen Conor Gleason. He came out for for the second last kick out against Mayo. Galway pushed up. They needed to win the ball. He came out under the stand, a big fist, broke the ball. Galway got it, got a free draw game, and then he comes up and kicks the winner. So, you know, there's still a place for the goalkeeper, but it has to be at the right time. And that's like that's that's like like anything, you know, like the half back or a cornerback pushing up the field, do it at the right time and it's great and put it over the bar. You're a hero, and you know, if you kick it wide or it's blocked out and so on. Turns, turns you over and they score at the other end. You look like a, a clown. So I don't think, you know, the flight keeper is dead and buried. You know, if they can do it at the right time, uh, it's a big plus. Because if you have a man coming up, I know they talk about the plus one and maybe old-fashioned people don't like, oh, what the hell's a plus one? And sure, he's a goalkeeper. But the way the modern game is, it's, it's that tactical that if everyone's going man-to-man, the goalkeeper has a free reign to come up, up to the halfway line at least or further. And then, People stand off him. Ethan Rafferty can, can put it over the bar. It's all, I suppose, Sean, down to what Geezer and Kieran Donaghy and uh, Conrad Gilligan and the back Armagh backroom team, what videos they're watching, what they're seeing, Donegal do, what way do Donegal set up? Can they can they see a weakness in Donegal where maybe they would let 
Ethan Rafferty come up the field and then it's up to Geezer then to say, is that risk worth it? You know, are they going to go for Ethan Rafferty to play him as a fly keeper and come up the field with the ball? Or do they see that risk maybe as too high and stick with Brian Hughes, who I think has done very well for him all this year, Cole? His kickers are excellent. So, uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, the risk and reward, that's what they're all talking about, these coaches now. And, you know, <laughs> it's, it's fair enough. Like, do you do you risk it or is it worth doing? So, I don't know. You know, you'd have a better handle on, on you know, the insight of what maybe... Ethan Rafferty can bring to the team and I suppose with the Donegal setup of Donegal go man to man but Donegal drop off so you know I can't see them you know leaving being so robotic that they stick to their men and let Ethan Rafferty run up the field McGinnis will have that covered off no doubt he'll have he'll have you know if Ethan Rafferty plays this is what we do if he doesn't you know we don't and I think the two week gap is massive for that that Donegal can think about all those scenarios against Tyrone it was very much off the, not off the cuff obviously but you know by the time you come down from the high of beating Derry and then trying to recover and then trying to watch videos of Tyrone for you know three or four days later like it's very hard to get all that information across but I think with a two-week gap now both Geezer and Jim McGinnis will have every avenue covered but listen you know you can have you can have every tactic in the you know on, under the sun but if a player goes out and makes a mistake or you know, as I said earlier, a high ball comes in and there's a mismatch and someone catches it and sticks it in the net or he sticks it wide. It could be the one they're losing the game and, and, you know, you look like a hero and if it goes in and if not, you know. Like, I listened to plenty of analysis of the Galway Mayo game because I would know the Galway, the Galway lads. I was in school with them down in St. Jared's gym. And, like, you know, Paul Joyce is a hero and Kevin McStay is, is a clown. Like, there's only a point in it and the kick of the yeah. You know, it could have gone anyway. So, you know... The winner, the winner gets all the products and, and, and the losers, you know, everyone's given out about making the wrong substitutions and this boy should have stayed also. That's in small margins and if it goes your way, you're a hero or if not, as I said earlier, you could be a cloud. Yeah, such fine margins on a game like this that it does look like it's going to go down to the wire and there, it's going to be something small maybe that's going to swing it either way and I think I'm, I'm going to make a prediction that Armagh's curveball is Shane McPartland's going to start now he hasn't played all year but right. it's, it's just I was looking through their team today and I thought the big bodies Donegal have around the middle that Armagh could be doing maybe with somebody with his explosiveness too around the middle but luckily he hasn't played all year that's just me being a trying to make a prediction there's going to be a curveball John so right. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what it's going to be but from a Donegal perspective, I know we're talking offer and trying to work out matchups and everything, and we'll move on to that. But um, whether Paddy McBurdy starts or not is, is probably a big question. He obviously didn't play in that league final um, a couple of weeks ago. He didn't play against Der- or he didn't start against Derry. Um, started against Throne, was tucked off, and then come back on for extra time. So McBurdy, do you see him? Is he going to be an impact sub? Is he maybe just not built that fitness back up in his legs yet since being injured? Or what? What way is McGinnis using McBurdy at the minute? Do you think? Yeah, uh, I think you know they can. T- they you know they can say injuries and coming back, but I just think that the way Jim's setting up the team that he he, he might rather Paddy coming on for 20, 25 minutes when the game opens up to suit Paddy. You know a bit better. Pat, you know Paddy's great coming on the loop and he, he's a great scorer and he can get you scores. But you know the modern game now is running up and down the field. And Paddy will have to go back and tackle, and then try and run back up the back up the field to be on the end of a you know you know end of a move and try and put it over the bar. And I don't know if Paddy has got that athleticism and his and his legs anymore. You know what I mean? He's he's pushing on now thirty, and uh, it's hard to know. It's a big call for him again. If he if he, if he needs him off, if he, if, he, if he starts someone else, you know, just for the sheer you know running up and down the field, tackling back. Putting in the hits, you know, he might put someone else on to do that job and spring McBurdy 10 minutes into the second half and say, There you are, Paddy, you've got 25 minutes plus in time. You've a half an hour now. The game's going to open up. You know what I mean? You're going to get your chances. And that's where, that's where McBurdy's brilliant is putting the ball over the bar. And if he gets a half a chance at all, he'll do that. So I would think that Jim might might hold Paddy back for, for, for the second half. You know, I wouldn't, wouldn't be one bit surprised at that there, Sean. I think, you know, that that really probably wouldn't be. I think it might be more of a surprise if he starts them. To be honest with you, the, the benches are going to be so huge here, John. Because obviously, well, we've seen in the league final, Armagh's bench, the likes of Super Campbell scored, Oshin O'Neill scored. Then against Down the last day, Oshin scored, Jason Duffy got the winner, Aidan Nugent scored off the bench. Armagh's last three points all came from substitutes. So 
both sides are going to have to use their subs wisely. And as you say, you know, Paddy McBride coming in 20 minutes left and the game opens up, that, that could be a tactic Donegal use because they need something off the bench, I'm sure, that, that's going to help win the game. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, uh, yeah, and Donegal, Donegal's bench, you know, would you name them Mara players that came off came off the last day, uh, the two Cully Hanna boys and, and O'Neill from Cross Like, you know, good firepower there, good forwards. Donegal, you know, wouldn't be, wouldn't be just coming down with... with Brilliant, brilliant subs to come on. You know, they have a few young fellas in there. Aaron Doherty's kind of his first year. He's small. He, he's, he's not bad, but, like, you know, he's not going to get you an awful lot of scores. Uh, they have a couple other boys. I'm, just, I'm trying to think now. There's any goal subs. Uh, I think Jamie Brennan come on against... Well, Jamie, Jamie, Jamie Brennan came off and, and came on against... Uh, he came on against Tyrone, wasn't he, and taken off. But Jamie's yeah. a good, experienced player. And, uh, you know... He, he did well against Derry. He got the goal. Uh, but then, you know, he, he wasn't great against Tyrone. Uh, so, but Jimmy Brennan's an experienced player. I, I, I like Jimmy Brennan. I think he's a good player. So, he definitely he definitely have an impact. Uh, who, where do we see? Uh, Jack McKelvey is a good enough sub for Derry Goy. He's always good for a score. He got a score an, an extra time against uh, Tyrone. But, you know, they're not, they're not, some of them, you know, Paddy McBurdy's a match winner. Paddy McBurdy could have a big impact when he comes on. The rest of them guys are are not going to, in my mind, strengthen the team. You know what I mean? If Jack McKelvey comes on for Niall O'Donnell, I don't think you know that's going to help Denny Gall or Daryl Wheel or something. Now, obviously, they're going to get it. They're going to get tired, and you're going to need fresh legs. But you know, they're not explosive subs that are you know that are going to come on and, and set the world alight. That's that's my opinion. Now, it might be uh, might be correct, but as you say, the forwards that. Nugent and Duffy and Oshin O'Neill came on the last day. Like they had a big impact, and it's, you know, the bench is going to play a big part because the second half, as I say, it's going to open up. And if you've got fresh legs and then three forwards coming on for Armagh that can take scores, and their confidence is going to be up after the last day. Like you know, it's going to be, you know, it could be that could be decisive. I don't know what I was saying to offer there. Just um, looking through the the last few meetings of Armagh and Donegal and the last four were obviously the two league meetings this year and the two championship meetings in 2022. And in three of them games, Stephen Campbell hasn't started. Um, now, I know, I think he was one of the ones with the bug um, for the league final, but he didn't start in Bolly Buffet in 2022. He did start the Clonus qualifier game in 2022. He didn't start this year in the league and then didn't start the league final. So um, it's maybe no coincidence that the one game he started, Arma actually won, but... He, he's I can see both sides of it, John. Like he's a massive impact off the bench. Like his power, speed, and um, shooting ability, everything else, running at tired legs, his direct running style. Like I can understand the tactic of it, but I think our fans want to see Stephen Campbell start, and he has that wee bit of magic that you know even when he's not playing well, he can still swing one, uh, you yeah. know, and, and beat him on and add that wee bit of excitement. So. I suppose from a Donegal point of view, what would your eyes say in Stephen Campbell starting or seeing him coming on? Well, it's a very good point you make, Sean, that, you know, I would rather see him starting because if you bring, if you have Super Campbell and uh, along with, you know, them other three lads, then maybe one of them other three lads is going to start instead of Super Campbell. But if, you know, if McGinney could kind of, if he could think, if he's thinking this week that he can put in a, a workhorse for the first 40 minutes there, you know, to tackle back on the half forward line, one kick out to get him for breaking ball, I don't know if, who that might be for our mass, someone that's, you know, you know them better than me, someone there in the sub that maybe could come in there for 40 minutes and do that job. And then be hoping that you're still in the game with with 25 minutes to go plus injury time and you can throw Supi Campbell on, as you say, direct running, take a score, the game opens up, ideal for him, uh, Jason Duffy, Nugent, Oshin O'Neill. Like that's, you know, if, if, if Geezer can sacrifice holding Supi Campbell for the second half, I think it'll, it'll be a brilliant ploy. No more than what hopefully McGinnis can do with Paddy McBerty too, when it opens up that we can spring him and, and get a kick out of that there. But uh, no, Subi Campbell, a brilliant player, as you say, a bit of an X factor with him, but he can kick points with the left foot, right foot, bit of pace, as you say, running at me and getting free. So, you know, if, if Geezer could hold him to the to 10 minutes of the second half, I think it'd be a big bonus for Armagh. But then it man says the risk of reward. You know, can he, can he, you know, do do Armagh have that workhorse that they can put into the half forward line, maybe play a defender there for, for the first 40 minutes and see how you get on? 
it's it's there's so many possibilities, John. It's hard to go through them all and, and to get them all right. But um, just before we finish up, we'll sort of talk on our matchups too because they're going to be key. And I know probably Paddy Burns going to pick up Ashin Gallon. He did in the two league clashes. If McBurdy starts, I would say Aaron McKay is going to go on him, or maybe Armal decide to put like a, a Peter McGrain on him, who you know will run up the field every time Armal has yeah. the ball and, and force McBurdy back. It's it's hard to know would McGrain be fit to mark McBurdy then when Donegal is coming forward, or would the switch with McKay? You know, there's there's so many question marks. Kieran Macken probably will go on Kieran Thompson, I would imagine. And that, that's probably three Donegal's three big forwards that Arma will yeah. have to worry about. No, Donegal's being forwards tonight at all. Our man from St. Junos, he's playing <laughs> well. So, uh, no, yeah, listen, absolutely. Uh, you know, and as I said, the, the matchups are grand and who are going to pick who up and how they're going to do But You know, blink of an eye, a man could stick a ball in the net and put one over the bar. Next thing, he scored 1-1 on, on maybe Armagh's best quarterback and, you know, they're looking to switch them then. So, it's, you know, as I said, it's, it's grand in theory, all these things. But, you know, there is, you know, like the analysis that they're going to now is, is, is phenomenal. So, as you say, they'll be looking at all that there. McGinnis will be looking at... Uh, you know, Peter McGrain, if he runs up the field with him, that's not going to be for Paddy McBurdy, you know what I mean? Like, they're going to have to get someone else to follow him if he runs up the field, maybe leave Paddy McBurdy up the, up up front on his own. If he starts, you know, we'll let Oshin Gallon do a lot of tracking back. But then, you know, the other thing is, like, you don't want Oshin Gallon running back the field all day, but that's that's part of the modern game. He's doing it He's doing it against Derry, he's doing it against their own, but you'd like to keep him further up the field so that when he gets it, you know, He's going to be dangerous. Like if you look at, at Galway and Mayo last week, but Galway, everyone back, but they kept Comer and they kept Finnerty up front, you know, and they got, you know, they got great joy out of it because Mayo be Mayo didn't drop a sweeper back and it was just get it up early to them and, and they played hell, you know. So can Denny Gall do the same? Leave Gallon and, and, and McBerty up and, and get early, but hopefully they turn Armagh over and, and hit them on the back. I think that's what Denny Gall are going to target is, you know, turning Armagh over in the half back line, Ray McHugh. Big like Keelan McGonigal, Shane O'Donnell, you know, the midfielders, Langan, Jason McGee, getting the hits in, turning them over, and then breaking like hell and getting up, using their speed. And like Denny Gall are very, very good at, at the transition, you know, be it a hand pass or a wee 30 yard kick pass, they're moving it, they're running angles, and, and, and they're playing with confidence. And I think that's where, you know, Denny Gall are going to hope, hopefully make hay at Sunday against Armagh. And in terms of the Donegal matchups, I think McCole is going to go on Mernon. But as I was saying, the offer, like if, if Armagh do decide to send Ray O'Neill, you know, drifting into the full forward line, does that cause a bit of confusion in the Donegal defence? Like McCole is, is the main go to man. Obviously. Yeah, McCole's the main go to man. And then, and then you've got John Mark Curran, who's pretty inexperienced, but he's in his second or third year now and, and he's getting on well. You know, Patter Mogan, the, 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 Mark Curran and Patter Mogan aren't, aren't very big. Shane and all. From her own club, you know, isn't a natural defender. Uh, Ryan McHugh's not very big. So when you go through the Donegal defence, you know, they're not very big. And a lot of people say they're not really defenders. Like Shane O'Donnell's definitely not a defender. Pat O'Mogan's not a defender. Mark Curran will be Brendan McCall. Uh, Ray McHugh obviously is, well, he's played, played all his football in the half back line, but he's more comfortable driving forward. That's his game. Keenan McGonigal, natural midfielder, who's having a phenomenal season for Donegal centre half back. And he's driving forward. Yeah, but I, I, I'm trying to think now who the other quarterback is. Kieran Moore, Kieran Moore, my own club man, should definitely not, a, <laughs> definitely not, a, definitely not a defender. Like you know what I mean, Kieran, like he's having a phenomenal season for his first year. So you know, but McGinnis has has come up with this tactic. He's he, he's playing them. That's it. They'll run all day and they'll tackle and they're physical. Kieran Moore's a big man now. Shane O'Donnell's not small, but Pat Morgan, Ryan McHugh, Mark Curran aren't big men. So you know, if Armagh do. Have more than say would they put Rain on either side too, try and try and isolate no more than McGinnis maybe coming up with something special that you know could they with, with Kieran Donaghy and Conor Gilligan you think they are two good forward coaches that maybe could they could Armagh come up with a, as you say a curve ball and put someone in and on and on Mark Curran and try and hit a high ball in on top of them or isolate Pat or Bogan you know so it's going to be fascinating but Denny Gall McGinnis will have a you know he'll he'll have all that thought out of thought out too. And hopefully he can negate it. And then, you know, as I say, Denny Gall, I think I'll be looking to hit our man on the break whenever they turn them over and they'll just go a hundred mile an hour up the field and, and try and hit our man on the break. And you know, Denny Gall, I know they got the goals against 
Derry, which were a lot of them came from the from, from the long kicker, but you know they had a few other chances against against Derry that they could have had goals and you know an extra pass, put a man through, and they just tapped it over the bar. So I think with McGinnis, there's a certainly a, a killer instinct that and Diddy Gall that if they do get in, put a goal chance or a sniff of it, they'll go for it and they'll you know they'll try and hit goals. How do you see it going, John? Because this is the, the third meeting, obviously. The Drew won, Donegal have won one, so it's Armagh's turn. Is that how it, it works out, or how do you see it going? If anyone knows anything about football, they know I'm <laughs> having, a, having a hope. It's, 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 hard, it's, it's hard to know, Sean. You know, like I predicted a, a draw in the league game, and I was right. I thought it'd be very close, and same in the league final, there wasn't much of it. But I have a sticky suspicion that Donegal are, are in a good place. You know, I just think that the two week break is is vital for them. They'll get well rested, they get well recovered. McGinnis will have everything tip top. You know, hopefully there's no injuries now. Hopefully Sean Patton is fit to play. The word is that he is, but you just don't know. Like a goalkeeper with a with a leg injury and the way that they kick out the ball and you know the the, the pressure that they come under kicking that ball, driving it out 70, 80 yards. So if Patton plays he, you know, he, he definitely will be a help to the league all. Uh, but that's only if Armagh push up in the kickouts. But, if, you know, Armagh aren't, aren't going to sit back too much and let the league all. But, you know, you just, we don't know. Like, Armagh could say, listen, Patton kick it to the corner back. We're going to drop back to the halfway line or inside our own half and set up the inning. And then Sean Patton's kick out becomes null and void. So, uh, if Denny Gall have no injuries and they're full strength, I think Denny Gall are going to be hard beat, Sean. I have to say it. You know, I just think that. That, 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 that they're moving well, McGuinness has got them going well, and you know, for all our mass huffing and puffing, uh, you know, they were on the easy side of the draw, you know, they were expected to get promoted out of Division 2 with Donegal, fair enough they did, and they played some good football at times, but I don't see a lot that has changed with our that when it comes to the crunch again, and a, and, a, and, a, and a big game where they need to win it, you know, are they going to have enough wherewithal to beat Donegal. I just think Donegal are in a good place uh, and I think they'll have too much for our mass, maybe 2 or 3.1 for Donegal. I, so I'm very confident. I can't go <laughs> well at, at all, John, but I do agree. I think Donegal are motoring well and just that whole McGuinness aura and everything he has, like it has only been enhanced by beating, particularly beating Derry. And Derry, the way it happened, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah. just, there's Aaron Kiernan said in our podcast after the down game that there's, he spooks people and that, yeah. that is true, like there's, there's yeah. an aura about McGuinness that, you know, yeah. it, it does uh, does spook people and hopefully yeah. it hasn't spooked our man, it, it doesn't play that big of an, an impact, but there's going to be a curveball, there's going to be something that is going to happen, John, that we haven't even touched on here and that's that's to be expected well, as well. That's the beauty of it and hopefully there is and something different and, you know, be it, be it our man, I'll come up with something different that spooked any goal or any goal, you know, you're always looking for that, that, that X factor or something that we haven't thought of and, you know, listen... We're all around football long enough. You, you can come up with these great ideas, but it's, can the players execute it in, in, in the heat of battle? And and can, can they can they pull it off? And that, that's the beauty of it. Listen, could everything could go out the window, and we could have a classic, and they could just go at it up and down the field. And you know, in the heat of battle, and Clonus and lost the final. Like tactics, you know, they can, a game can take on a total different life of its own from what both managers are expecting during the week and what the players are expecting and you know emotion can take over and teams can just go at it and that, wouldn't that be great to see so you know listen it's great to be looking forward to an off the final bonus and, and the, the amount of hype and the excitement around it for this time of the year it's just it's just brilliant and it's great for the ga it's great for clubs and it's great for you know families looking forward to taking the wings to close on a big day out and you know we would have to be thankful for it because there's i suppose there's seven other counties in Ulster that, that would love to be there on sunday so we can we can look forward to that at least. Yeah, it's brilliant building up to it and our fans mm-hmm. have been starved in the last um, 15, 16 years, so definitely no complaints. But looking forward to the final just have to go and win one now, hopefully. But um we'll we'll be up to date with all um all the final things related. we are have plenty of previews, interviews and everything else coming up over the, the next few days, so make sure to keep an eye out on our social media, on our website. Make sure to follow us on YouTube, on Spotify, or wherever else you get your podcasts. And we'll be back with the podcast on Saturday morning. We'll have our our club review show. And then on Sunday evening, we'll hopefully have a few interviews from the game, no matter what way it turns out. So, John, great to hear from you. We're looking forward to a big game and hopefully an Armagh win. And if not, a, a good game.
Good on you, Sean. No problem. Hope uh, I hope we have a good game now. And, uh, as I say, there's no controversy with referees or bad decisions. It's whoever <laughs> wants it. It's, it's one fair and square in the pitch, and uh, we can all be friends afterwards. Good stuff, John. Good man. Thanks for that. All right, Sean. No bother. Through, he might go for it, still going, trying to barge his way through. Goes to the shot, he's running off. Arriving, Ryan O'Neill from an almost impossible angle, and that's the rousing score I'm now looking for. This is Connor Turbot, kicks this one in. Oh, that's absolutely superb.